morning again. Got to get better at our uh, 15 minutes early so we're beyond time. But I forgot about that idea. Yeah, I already went to the wayside. <laughs> it's actually my fault today. My testimony got a little long again. Last minute doing that. Good morning, everyone. All right. See some of the people popping on, so that's great. Yes, good morning. It's like Mike, Linda, Arlen Inga. June, Mary, um, my mom. Yeah, Lavon. Day is it? Thursday? No work today? That's good. Yeah. Good morning, Bonnie. And Bonnie and June. Thanks for joining us. All of our faithful uh, fans or followers and <laughs> Bible studies, whatever, all this stuff. Yeah. <laughs> Good morning. Well, we brought you a little sun. I heard it was kind of a little cold and rainy and not fun yesterday based on some of the posts. So. Yeah, dangerous driving. It's been good. We had a fun day yesterday, so we can share a little bit of that. And, um, yeah. I'll pray real quick and then uh, we'll get into it. Father, we thank you for uh, this time with you. Thank you, Lord, for this morning already. We thank you, Lord, for your just continued favor and blessing on, on our family and all those that are watching. Just your goodness, Lord, how you are so, so good. It's Father, I thank you for today and ask that you bless today. Bless your, your word. May it speak to us, Lord, as we share it this morning. Also, Lord, I just thank you for all the testimonies in, in our life and all those around us, Lord. May we just continue to remember those testimonies and share them with others. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. 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 Good morning, Amen. Noreen. Hi, Ralia. Yes, we had a fun uh, fun day. Went to the beach yesterday with our friends Mike and Carrie Molash. They're from Minnesota and they moved here. Yeah, they were very close neighbors to us. We knew each other for many, many years. Josh helped them sell their house and they moved down here to get some sun. Joke around how it's like <laughs> we see them now more when we're in Florida than we did when we were neighbors. Yeah. <laughs> Just, There's definitely something to that. Yeah, realizing. And you have to be very intentional about seeing people when you live by them all the time because it's just easy to get in that habit of like, oh, next week, next month, next season, whatever it might be, we'll get together, we'll see each other, we'll plan a gathering. Yeah. And it just becomes this big thing, and then it never happens because you think it's always available. And time is short. <laughs> right. So, yeah, it was fun. Did a quick grill out at their house impromptu, and yeah. just had a wonderful day, just relaxing. Yeah, the kids love them. Uh, yeah. Love them and their cats. <laughs> yeah. And beautiful kitties. Yeah. Um, Very entertaining. Did that, and then we uh, got to have ice cream with um, Pastor Chris and... Angela, Angela they're three from, kids from Salina Texas and uh, it's great they're here on vacation so yeah Chris and Angela pastor the movement church that we've gone to twice now when we in December when we were in Texas and then in January when we were like when we got to Texas when we were leaving Texas and we really really enjoy their church and yeah. pastor Chris's story is amazing like he yeah. worked in the business world for 20 years and then felt like the Lord was calling him to pastor a church in Texas. They weren't even living in Texas. <laughs> so they're so incredible. Cool. And yeah. their kids are amazing. Um, they have two sons and a daughter and Elena. And their daughter just talked and talked and talked for a very long time. <laughs> and Elena's like, why do we have to go already? I'm like, well, <laughs> we were there for like, I don't know, two hours, yeah. a little over an hour. <laughs> put that on the meter so whatever. yeah yeah so good good day yeah that was in Clearwater good ice cream there yep yep <laughs> back to Clearwater it's kind of fun it's hopping place last night yeah um, I think there's a lot of spring break happening yeah they were on their spring yeah, break yeah it's in Texas on their spring break <clears throat> yeah yeah it was just great to encourage each other in the Lord too and mm -hmm. share testimony of his goodness and just to you know like share what the Lord is showing each of us yeah. like I kind of how we're having these aha moments and and uh, just to step out and do things a little differently to, to have structure but yet to break out of the box that was my conclusion from last night yeah just to share testimonies it was uh, you know I would share with Pastor Chris that 
uh, last mess we went to is when he was declaring this word of acceleration yeah. over the season, and uh, I've we grabbed that. onto that and <laughs> been running Maybe with it also. Maybe that wasn't for and, anybody else. <laughs> and declaring that as well, and uh, it played out right away. I just gave him testimony that same days when I met my dad and my sisters and my yeah. family all happened that same day. So. And then that week, things just kept accelerating. Everything accelerated, and it yeah. has been accelerating. And I, I release that over all those that are looking for that encouraging word as well, that things that feel like they, they're going to take a long time won't, mm. that they'll come quickly. Yeah. And um, God God can do anything in a moment, so. Yes. Amen. Yeah, so on that note, um, today's just blessing. Um, it's, it just never fails how, I always second guess stuff, so I'm, I'm at Panera Bread, and uh, I got their membership for coffee, so. They're getting to know me. It's fun at Panera Bread. There's always like the same people there in the morning. So working? We, I don't even no, know if they're working. No, the same customers. I just think it's the same customers right. that are there. The same spot they sit. You know, are creatures of habit. And then come on in. And I'm, I'm guilty of it too because I'm going there pretty much every morning too to grab coffee. And anyway, it's, it's good. So. And it's a good deal, by the way. It's a good deal. He's got three months of unlimited coffee for free. Yeah. And then after that, it's. $8? $9? $9. A $8.99. Okay, a month. Unlimited coffee. So. And I Panera Bread, that's my plug for them. Maybe you don't go to Panera as much as Josh does. <laughs> it's a great spot. It's a great deal. He's, they're not working. making any money on him. No, I just go there and I work too. Their internet's good and all yeah. those things. So it's a it's a blessing. So bless Panera Bread because they're uh, <laughs> they're doing good things. Hi, and, Nancy. Uh, we are just talking about you. <laughs> hey, sister. Um, anyway, so I'm there and... I there was these there was two ladies next to me and they were just talking and they're just I could just feel they're filled with joy and I just I haven't heard much of that lately like when I usually hear people talking it's kind of a doom and gloom and <laughs> and so and I, I didn't really hear what they were talking about I just what I I could just sense the joy that was radiating from both of them and I and I wanted to go bless I was like maybe I'll go bless them and just be like hey I just want to let you guys know that you guys give off a lot of joy and uh and I just wanted to sew into this with $20. I, I, I don't know if they would need it. I, I just thought I was feeling like they were going to bless somebody else, right? Um, but then I second-guessed it because I just was like, ah, it's going to be weird. <laughs> it's always weird if I walk up to a, anybody. It's weird to me and share that. So so then I was uh, going to leave and I'm like, yeah, I'll have to, maybe I'll go to my faithful Wawa gas station. It seems like I always have encounters there. So then I, I, I go use the restroom again real quick before. And, uh, and then as I'm walking down there, I look over and one of the employees who I've noticed, her name's Jade. Um, I like that name. She, she looks like she's, I think she's a newer employee because she's got the name tag that's wrote on with crayon, you know, so you just kind of start, you don't have the actual official name tag. And, uh, and she's helped me just the last few times and I've noticed her. And, she was sitting there kind of listening to music or something on her phone, and I think it was her break. And so oh. she was just sitting there on a break, and it was, it was like, oh, maybe I should go talk to Jade and bless her with $20. Um, but I said, ah, she's on her break. She looks like she's on her phone. She's probably whatever. All these excuses in my head. <laughs> so I, I actually leave. I leave Panera Bread <laughs> out to the parking lot. And all the way out to the parking lot, it got more and more confirmation that Jade was the one that I was supposed to go back and bless. <laughs> so I did the classic, put all my stuff in the van. So this is when you were going to be on time for the soap when study. When I was going to be on time for the soap uh, study, okay. exactly. <laughs> I was like, well, I'm already running late for the soap study. Uh, I should just go. And uh, she's on break, so who knows how that'll be. Well, the Lord was like, no, Jade is the one. I mean, you, uh -huh. he's like already given me this prompting. And uh, he, you know, when I first saw her, I think, and I didn't do it. So I, sure enough, I put my stuff in there, walked back into the restaurant, or Panera. And she's in the way back of it, so I have to walk right by everybody again. But sure enough, she's there, and I walk right up to her, and, and I go... I go, hi Jade, I'm Josh, because she's got a name tag on. And I go, I, I don't know if you recognize me. And I go, I just, I, I pulled out the 20, and get, I had it out, and I go, I just, I was praying, and I asked God who to bless, and he said I was supposed to bless you with $20. And uh, she she looks at me, and she grabs me, and goes, oh my goodness, oh my goodness, <laughs> I'm going to start crying. Oh my goodness. I love it. And I'm like, <sighs> she just is like, oh, I'm starting to shake. I'm like, 
gosh. She goes, I was just, I was just thinking to myself, where am I going to come up with twenty dollars to pay my mom for gas because she's been driving me to work all the time. Oh my! She said she was just thinking that thought when she was sitting there. What? And she's like, I don't. She's like, I don't have. And you show me, give me twenty dollars. <laughs> I'm like, I just started. I just started smiling. I go, wow, Jade. I go, praise God. I go, God what? just sees you and knows you and he spoke it to me. I go, I was on my way out and I turned back here because I felt the prompting. It's even more powerful. That I was supposed to come give you $20. <laughs> and she's just like, oh God, I think I'm gonna cry. I gotta stand up. She's like, I gotta still work. She's like, she's like, she's like all like, like, cause she's like, look at my hands, look at my hands. She's like, I'm shaking. I'm like, I'm like, it's okay. I just released peace. It's, it's okay. This is, this is the Lord. She's like, wow. And I go, do you believe Jesus is your savior as your savior? Do you know Jesus as your savior? She goes, oh yes, yes, yes. I go, well, this is a sign. He sees you. He loves you. He's, he's, he's hearing providing. your prayers hearing and your prayers. answering them in real time. <laughs> and uh, she's like, oh, she's just like, oh my gosh. Oh, this is so good. And I'm like, and she's like, ah, oh, she goes, this is, this is so helpful. Thank you very much. She goes, I, she goes, actually, I, you know, I just, I just got this job and we, our family, you know, she goes, I'm only 20 years old. Oh, wow. I'm going to ask you how old she was. Okay. She's like, I'm only 20, but my family, you know, they're in need. And she goes, I have to help buy diapers too. It's not for my kid. It's for my sister. We have a baby. And, wow. and she's like, I, I've been looking at, they need diapers and stuff like that. And so this is, oh. this is really big. And she goes, I just started, so I don't have a check. And. And I'm like, wow, well, let's, I go, how can I be praying? She's like, kind of talking about that. I'm like, well, can I pray for continued favor and blessing on your yeah, life? And that, vision. And just giving God the glory for his presence and that he's shown himself faithful. And uh, so we prayed briefly. It was pretty quick prayer. She's like, oh, I got to go back to work. And she's like, I, I don't, I don't want to start crying because I'm supposed to be, you know, like, <laughs> I'm like, well, you can process this later. Just know that yes. the Lord loves you and sees you. And I just said, you know, Jade, I go, I, I just pulled out my wallet. I'm like, hey, Jade, this this $20, this was this one's from the Lord. This one is just for me. Yeah. I just want to bless you. I and, love uh, it. She's like, really? Whoa, this is incredible. She's like, I'm like, I go, yeah. I go, thank you for just loving your family so well. Yes. And uh, you are such a treasure Honoring. to them. And mm. so anyway, I go, Jade, I'm sure well, I'll see you again. I'll be back here, of course. Mm. And uh well, I love uh, that. Yeah, good point. And so anyway, just incredible encounter, right? Just to be in faithful and listen <laughs> to the incredible. Lord. And so uh, Jade, it just bless uh, her. <laughs> Dr. Socks off. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, Noreen. Yeah. I mean, just think, she's like, is this, like, I would almost have to, like, blink. Like, is this really happening? Like, I was literally just thinking and praying for this. And then here comes this random guy giving me $20 because the Lord told him to. <laughs> Wow. God, you wow us. I, God, you wow us. I just don't know how you could say that there is not a God. No. With, if you hear any of these testimonies. No. That I just, I just sit there and I'm like, I said, praise God with her. I go, praise mm. God. I go, this is a sign and a miracle. Just right here. Yes. Um, you were just praying for twenty. She's, <laughs> she's specifically twenty dollars. She like, you should. <laughs> I mean, it's like sometimes I wish I could video this stuff because if you could see her face and what the response, it's like. <laughs> It, yeah, it's pretty cool. So, thank you, Father, for your timing. Yes. Thank you, Lord, for your provision. Promptings. Thank you for your promptings. Thank you, Lord, for and your for Josh's patience obedience. that he knew how long it was going to take me to figure it out. And uh, he still worked. So that's just a, that's a promise, you know, to know that, that the Lord's faithfulness and how he uses each one of us. And it's, it's just even more powerful, right? Mm. And so I just, uh, it spoke to me as I was driving home going, man, God, I love you. And I'm so in awe of you that you are so, so good. That's why I said his goodness is yes. so real. And uh, I just want to encourage us all to just be listening to that voice. And, um, you know, that was only 20 bucks. But that 20 bucks is is a, is a what is it, a marker, like in her life, right? It's a milestone of like whatever. It's a memory stone Yeah. of yeah. like she's going to be like, just like me. That's a memory stone. I was reading through the testimonies this morning because I was updating oh, them. Oh, good. And I was updating them. It's just like... His I'm, database of the testimonies yeah, from, so I, since January 1st. Yep. So I've been tracking who, where, and kind of the rough story bullet point of their story and what we prayed for. And 
I was doing that before I got to bless Jade and it just built up my faith, my hope. I'm just like listening to reading these things and going, how can I say that? How can I question anything about the Lord and watching how he's provided and done incredible wow. things. And so uh, anyway, I'm, I'm so thankful. I'm thankful for each one of you. I'm thankful for just that encouragement and uh, the opportunity to share these testimonies with each one of you because that's yeah. powerful. It makes it even more fun, right? Yeah. <laughs> so anyway, that's that's that part of it. Wow. Now we now we move on to uh, the soap study of. Do you have graphs? <laughs> yeah. Uh, I was thinking we had intended to like go back as a family and pray for these individuals yeah. and families yeah. and whatever it might be couples. So I would really like. I was just thinking we could incorporate that into our day at some point. Like the kids can even just pick one and pray on their own for that person, but also we could just pick one every mealtime that we're praying and pray for that person or people. Yes. And, and yes. you know, I think that'd be really powerful to teach our kids. Like, yeah, you might think that you're, you don't know the whole circumstance and that you don't know how to pray for them, but that every single word that you utter is heard by the Lord and he is, he is answering those prayers. I mean, they, yeah. We'll have to make sure they hear this one. Yeah, it's pretty cool. So anyway, awesome. um, Galatians. So where did you land? In Galatians the soap? two. Um, I went with Galatians two at twenty. Yeah. That's okay. a pretty known verse. Oh yeah. Um, All right, I'm in. I have a verse from Galatians one, and that ties into twelve, thirteen, and sixteen. Okay. <laughs> well, you can do that. You don't I have mean. to make it this complicated. <laughs> it's just that when I listening to it and reading it, I feel like the Lord makes these like supernatural connections for me, but I don't always have a great time explaining those connections with my verbal words. So sorry if I get kind of confusing sometimes. Do you want me to go first? Yeah. Okay. So back yesterday in Galatians 1, this just really stood out to me when we listened to it the night before. And then when I read it, and then I even sent it to a friend of mine because she has overcome a people pleasing spirit in her own life. Um, so Galatians 1 verse 10, I just, I love this. This is Paul talking. He says, obviously, this is NLT translation. Obviously, I am not trying to win the approval of people, but of God. If pleasing people were my goal, I would not be Christ's servant. That just was like, bam, because yeah. I have struggled with a people pleasing spirit in my past. And I am overcoming that right. each day I am declaring. Uh, and verses like that super help me out, really help me out because it's like, oh yeah, yep, yep, that's the perspective I need. That's the eternal perspective that I need. So here's how I related it to Galatians 2. This is Paul confronting Peter. And I do not remember reading this before. I don't either. Okay. Because yeah. I'm like, sometimes things, you can read it and it, it just didn't mean anything in that time. Yeah. But I think because I had focused so much on Galatians 1.10 yesterday, this really, this story really stuck out to me. So maybe I'll just read kind of this whole part. Paul confronts Peter. This is starting in verse 11 in Galatians 2. But when Peter came to Antioch, I had to oppose him to his face. Confrontation. Something I struggle with. Good job, Paul. <laughs> For what he did was very wrong. When he first arrived, he ate with the Gentile believers who were not circumcised. But afterwards, when some friends of James came, Peter would not eat with the Gentiles anymore. He was afraid of criticism from these people who insisted on the necessity of circumcision. As a result, other Jewish believers followed Peter's hypocrisy, and even Barnabas was led astray by their hypocrisy. Um, I, I'll read a little bit more. When I saw that they were not following the truth of the gospel message, so they had kind of gone back to their the way that they knew, the, the law, the regulations, and not the gospel, not the freedom. I said to Peter in front of all the others, since you, a Jew by birth, have discarded the Jewish laws and are living like a Gentile, why are you now trying to make these Gentiles follow the Jewish traditions? You and I are Jews by birth, not sinners like the Gentiles. And then verse 16, yet we know that a person is made right with God by faith in Jesus Christ, not by obeying the law, the old system. And we have believed in Jesus Christ we have believed in Christ Jesus so that we might be made right with God because of our faith in Christ, not because we have obeyed the law. For no one will ever be made right with God by obeying the law. Amen. Amen. And that's hard. 
Because I feel like there's so... Like, the law represents, like, a structure. Uh, uh, this is... It's, like, black and white. Like, this is right... A, B, and C. Yep, this a, is B, wrong. That'll be C. It's my checklist. I'm going to do these things. I'm going to be saved. Everybody's going to be in perfect order. And, you know, that doesn't even actually happen. And so here's Peter, who used to be that way. Walked with Jesus. Um, totally born again. <laughs> whatever that looked like in that time period. Um, saved and set free from that law but when he was with people that observed the law still the jews and it must be james and his people who came with him he reverted back to that like ooh, because he's almost still seeing the gentiles as lesser than the jews is what how i was seeing it and and i feel like i can correlate that in different ways in my life too so he he then decides to enforce the law and judge the Gentiles, even though he was just doing the same things that he was, he was with them, he was eating with them, which is another unclean or uncircumcised, I don't quite understand all the circumcision stuff. He, he now is like, oh, now I'm higher and mightier because I'm in the law than you people. And so who is he trying to please? That's what came back to me from Galatians 1.10. He's trying to please the Jews, <laughs> the people, because he's just like, well, that's, that's what I know that, that will create less controversy. And Peter is, who also was a Jew, very much in the law, very much regulating the law and enforcing the law to the point of death of the, of the Christians. He's seeing it as an overall picture. And so I'm not judging Peter here. I'm actually relating with Peter <laughs> and going, oh my, that's where I am at so many times. And I need like a Paul in my life to go, Sarah, what are you doing? Who are you trying to please? Why are you giving into hypocrisy when you're with these people versus these people? You know, why are you, why are you somebody different when you're at church versus at work? I would say that was a huge thing for me when I worked in pharmacy. I felt like I was a whole different person at work and I hated that. I hated who I was, that I would gossip and I, I hated it. Every night I went home like, Oh, Lord, forgive me. I did it again. Like, why do I keep doing this? Why do I keep giving into this temptation? But yet, when I was at church, I would be like, Oh, yes, I'm not going to do that. And I was this whole different person. I was sort of living, you know, it's not fun to live like two different lives. Right. Um, Casting Crowns has a song about it. As you can see, I relate to music. I always have a song to go with what I think. Uh, I think it's the stained glass masquerade <laughs> that, oh, why do I leave it at the altar? Why do I leave it at the door when I leave church on Sunday? Now, I feel like since leaving the corporate world and, and the lifestyle we're living, thankfully I've been able to step out of that and I'm just me wherever I am. I, I would even say like we took the disc assessment, um, if you've ever done this, like a personality type of thing. And they would say, at, I did it at St. Francis at the hospital I worked at, they would say like, okay, well, now you're probably somebody different here at work than you are at home. So we're looking at you, Sarah, at work. So take it how you would respond to these things at work. And isn't that just enforcing that we should be a different person, like with our family versus with our coworkers? Right. Yet we're all God's family. Should we not love our neighbor who could be the coworker sitting next to you who's super annoying and not following the rules? <laughs> I know you guys have been in the situation as I was all the time. They're on their phone. They're on the internet. They're not working. You're doing all the work. You're answering the phone calls. <laughs> I know this. <laughs> and uh, and it's so easy to stand in judgment of that person and be like, well, she's not in my family. I would never do things like that. Like, I don't, I'm not called to love her as I love myself because she doesn't go to church with me on Sundays. I can love these people. They're much easier to love. Thank you, Lord, for putting these people in my life. But those people, you know, whatever. So I'm totally being a hypocrite when I was when I was two-faced like that. I was, you know, uh, uh, I kind of think of what the... I was an anal, analytical personality at work, and then I was an I at church. <laughs> you know, I was interactive. I was social. <laughs> anyway, so I, I just... I'm. Yeah, I mean, I know Josh is sort of like that Paul voice in my life because he's not afraid to call out the greatness in me and really, you know, just say it for how it is. Like, hey, what are you doing? <laughs> out of love, though, right? <laughs> right? I love you too much to see you going down this road yeah. of hypocrisy. 
Don't need to hold on to that. But it ultimately comes down to who am I trying to please? You know, if I'm trying to please men, then yes, I become a hypocrite. And I'm like, oh, I'm this way with these people and I'm this way with this people. And, and oh, I'm going to show my best self with, you know, I haven't thought about it on Saturday when we had met all the Faster Way team. And that was like a big deal for me. Like, oh, how do I act? I hope I look strong, you know, because I'm in their program. Like, I don't want to, whatever, I don't want to like have a bad name in the Faster Way. And that's so silly because all they want is for me to be me. And I realized that after a few minutes, thankfully the Lord was prompting me, just be you. Like, right. they just want to know the real you. They're, yep. they're not judging you. And, but I feel like it's easy to do that. Like you get around maybe your pastor. Like you're with your pastor and it's like, oh, I better I better shape up. I better act like this way because, you know, but who are you trying to please? Your pastor? Well, your pastor just doesn't want you to please him. He wants you to please the Lord and that will be pleasing to him in, yeah. or her in his in your sight. So <laughs> that, that's my, my conclusion. And, and I want to listen to that voice of Paul in my life, like that confrontation going, hey, wake up. Like this, who are you pleasing here? Are you pleasing God? Is that what you're fully living for? Because if you aren't, then you're not Christ's servant, as Paul says. And he saw it for what it is. I love that. And to not, um, so it's, for me, I tend to, when I, when I get confronted in that way or whatever, like say I was Peter in that circumstance, I would sort of go down this road of like condemnation or shame because I, I can heap enough of that on myself. And then I'm like, oh man. But I'm, I'm thinking, you know, Peter in this way was like, oh wow, Paul's carrying a lot of wisdom. I need to listen to this. Here he is bringing me freedom because he didn't want to, he didn't want to live that way either. I don't even think he realized that he did it. But thankfully, Paul saw that he was doing it because what was happening was then other believers who respect and honor Paul were, were, I mean Peter were like, oh, so that's okay to do that. So and also realizing that I stand in a place of influence. And that my actions matter. Like it matters to my children who are watching. It, it matters to you guys who are watching our lives. Like how am I going to live my life to spur others on into following Christ in a new deeper level and not causing them to trip, like be a stumbling block and causing them to, uh, to sin. That's right, that's right. Good morning, Dak. No. Nice to uh, meet you online. <laughs> Does yours have anything to do with that? <laughs> um, no, I was going down, uh, well, yeah, I mean, it has something to do with that. It's just... Uh, the law. Mine, mine was more about the law. And, you know, as we were reading in Deuteronomy yeah. about the commandments and the law, and, you know, you, you can so quickly get sucked into, you know, this is right, this is wrong, and get legalistic very quickly. And so that's where, you know, like Sarah said, I think my mind wants to go too. It's like, well, if I do these things and this is going to be the outcome, I'm, I like, you know, equations that make sense. Right. So I do A and B, it's yeah. always going to equal C. So if I give to the poor and do all these great deeds, then I'm going to be blessed. It's like, yes, but it's not because of your deeds. It's not because of doing good things. It's because of one thing, and that is my belief and faith in Jesus Christ that paid it all for me. And he loves me the same whether I do those things or I don't. Mm. It's, it's just that as I believe in him and walk out my faith, it's kind of one of those things. It's just, it's interesting. I'm realizing that it, you just, you kind of want to, it's right. As, as I fall more and more in love with Sarah, it's like, I want to serve her more and more and more and be with her and help her and raise her up because I just love her so much. It's the same as the father, right? It's not because I have to earn her love. I have to whatever. She already loves me. So, and I love her. And so that's good. I, I'm grateful for that. You know, the Lord has given me marriage as a symbol of that. Yeah. And, uh, yes, it's, it's dying to self. So the word that came to me was 20 and 21 says, I have been crucified with Christ and I no longer live but Christ lives in me. The life I live in the body, I live by faith in the Son of God who loved me and gave himself for me. I do not set aside the grace of God yeah. for it. if righteousness could be gained through the law, Christ died for nothing. <laughs> and uh, wow. I just am like, oh, forgive me, Father, because I believe that in reading that sometimes that is when I start going under after law, and righteousness in my own eyes, it's like all of a sudden 
I'm discounting Christ and what he did for me. It's wow. like, it, it, it's looking the other way and going, no, everything is because of Christ. And because of Christ's great love and his sacrifice, he, he laid down his life for me. He laid it down for you. He laid it down for Sarah. He laid it down for the person that's just your enemy. And, and to understand that and realize like, wow, it's, it's kind of one of those things that as I get more revelation of that love, it, it just stirs up my heart to really forsake all of the worldly stuff to love Christ back and through doing that, loving my brothers and sisters and those people around me. And so, that's awesome. And not get caught up in the law. It, it's, it's to Sarah's point, I think is right on where it, it, it's kind of where we get denominations where we get all this thing with the Christianity faith. It's because of my experience. I have some build a faith on that or a religion on my experiences. And we've got to be careful with that because like, well, I do this, 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 and this. And if you don't do those things, then maybe you're not saved. It's like, no, I need to stop that. I got to stop judging people where they're at. Wow. I just got to love them where they're at and be obedient in my own life. I can only control Josh in his walk with the Lord and continue to worship him and not, not get in the way of that with everything else, creating these religious rules and whatever. Now that being said, the commands and the laws and those things are good for our lives. The Lord put them in there for a reason. And yeah, for sure. he's giving us like the playbook of how to live and, and really to serve others well, so. Right, and he blessings upon yourself, but yeah. that's not the root of salvation. But that's not that's not the whole reason, right? It's like, it's kind of that prosperity gospel thing. It's like, we gotta be careful of that, that I start chasing that whole thing and good works is gonna get me saved and just like, I, yeah. So it's a, it's a fine line. And so it's a, it's a constant battle, right? And we, we, it's played out in the Bible through Paul and a lot of the apostles, you know, they're just like, ah, so that's what the Lord's speaking to me. Praise the Lord for his goodness. Thank you, Jesus, for being real and showing up every time. You're always here, Lord. All we have to do is humble ourselves and pray and seek you. And Lord, just trust you with everything. So Father, we just, uh, we come before you and we just ask for your continued mercy and grace upon our life, Lord. And Lord, that you just help us to, to break free from these laws or these rules or these things, this religion that we have, Lord, that we can just walk with you in your Holy Spirit. And Lord, as we do that, Lord, we're just gonna continue to fall more and more in love with you and understand the great love that you have for each one of us. And as we experience that great love, Lord, that it just gets, it just pours out of us everywhere we go. That people experience your love through us because you live inside each one of us, Lord. Yeah. So Father, we just, uh, we just ask for that to be released Ooh. more and that um, we can just continue to see it and testify to your goodness all around us, Lord. Lord, I love you and I thank you for this word of encouragement. I thank you for the blessings. Um, that your presence, every time we just step in and, and seek you, that you're always there. Mm. So Lord, may you just continue to be faithful and just, I should say, help us in our faith yes. Lord, more than anything. I know you are faithful. I just, <laughs> help me be faithful to seek you okay. in everything. Yeah. And uh, Lord, I love you and we praise you in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 All right. Well, hope that speaks to you guys. There's a lot of stuff there and we're, uh, we're so grateful and so blessed. The Lord is moving amongst all of us right now. I just, you guys are all that are watching are doing this. So seek, seek him in the word yeah. and uh, get in your Bibles, you. read whatever is speaking to you. But, you know, we're in Galatians, so follow in Galatians. Yeah. It's going to be powerful. And, um, you know, we'll be Galatians 3 tomorrow. And um, Deuteronomy 20. Deuteronomy 20. So. Yeah, I think my Bible for Galatians, it says Heaven's Freedom is the title of the book of Galatians. So that's really awesome. Yeah. Hi, I Katie. Know. Have a great yes, day, yes. everyone. Hey, Dak. Thanks yeah. for joining us. It is a friend. beautiful day here in Florida. We pray sunshine over the Midwest. Yeah, send warm your way. <laughs> May those uh, daffodils and tulips be pushing through the ground. And if anybody's from Florida, can you please tell me if those types of flowers show up here? Like... I don't know. Do bulbed flowers? I, 
I like don't see any of that. I mean, people have geraniums out and stuff like that, and petunias from like all winter. I don't know. That's a total side note. It's not really bugging me much. <laughs> I love daffodils and tulips. All right, but so it now is it more to, that now it's, it needs to be my problem. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we just maybe when we go north in a month, <laughs> we'll right. see some. All right, guys. Well, have a great day, and uh, we'll yeah, see you tomorrow. You. <laughs> bye bye. bye.